Wagwan. Wagwan. We're shaking with you, beloved. Man, just at the house, chilling. Just waiting on you to call. How's everything? Man, I don't, we got new counselors, man. They've been shutting us down for every every minute. We we think we'd be out. We'd be <laughs> out for an hour, and they locked the house down again. What does that mean? Like, what, why would they do that? Because they said they smell smoke or whatever. You know, you know when you got new counselors, they be trying to, like, you know, um, set a tone of how they want things. So oh. they just been, I don't know what they think they're getting out of that. Niggas in here is facing 400 years. These niggas going to keep smoking. These niggas smoke crack in here. <laughs> oh, shit. Really? Yeah. Damn. How y'all, y'all, niggas what is jail about? Yeah. Why, why can you get everything in jail? Like, everything. Weed, crack. You can get cell phones. You can get all types of shit in jail. Like, what the fuck is going on? Well, you know they don't pay the they don't pay the COs enough. Oh. They got the, they give they give the COs bullshit salaries, and then they tell them to um to watch over people that was making millions of dollars. <laughs> so you know, shit happens. Yo, that was funny how you just broke that down. Like they not gonna cut, come in and be like, "Yo, let me let me get this. If you need this, I need. I know what you're worth." Nigga. Let's call it from a federal prison. I ain't even hear you just now. Oh, I said the COs probably know what everybody's worth and who who got money on the outside. So they hell they, yeah, they, they know. trying to get it. Yeah, they know everything. They just, they they know shit that ain't even true. <laughs> Motherfuckers, all they do is gossip. Oh God. So, CO came in here one day talking about yeah tax because I know you fucked Angela Yee. I said, where you get that from, nigga? Did you? No, I uh, said I ain't never had sex with no Angela Yee. He like, well, I read that on the blog. I said, my nigga, well, you gonna read a whole bunch of other shit about me on the blog too? I want you. I want to know if you fell ass real. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fake shit. You know what's so funny? The internet used to be the place for the news, like the real news. Now we've learned that people can put anything they want on the internet they really can and that doesn't literally, mean it's true you could, you could literally create a letterhead right now and you could say miko grimes neglect son and that's it you neglected your son that's it it don't matter if it's that, true or not. that's it don't matter if it's true you left in my mossy pool in brooklyn never even been there that's just the way it goes yeah speaking of that i wanted to ask you about this fab situation so you you've heard about it right yeah, yeah, I've seen it on TMZ. So Fab allegedly knocked Emily B, his baby mama's two front teeth out. Did, did you see the video in front of the house? He had the knife and he was arguing with the dad. Yeah. And then, you know, she was trying to film him and he had came at her. And, you know, she said... Yeah, I find that hard to believe. I find that hard to believe that you knock somebody's two teeth out and then they're able to tape you. <laughs> the t if you lose one tooth as an adult... In a forceful way, that's beyond painful for so for the two front teeth, especially as a woman. Yeah, I, I, that's kind of hard to believe because I could see her be more being in the mirror, looking at herself before trying to tape them. You know what I mean? Like she should have had that. Huh? But who knows? Casanova got that set trip and record out. Who knows what he's aspiring these days? Oh my God! I, I've been waiting to see because you know th there people are on different sides of this. Half the people are like they don't believe it. They're not gonna just say Fab did this until there's proof, and the other people are like, what more proof do you need? Like the nigga um, did do this. Like why would she accuse him of that? Like specifically, and but there's no pictures yet. Like when Rihanna accused Chris Brown, we saw pictures immediately, and we haven't seen those pictures yet. So. Yeah, Fab ain't do nothing to nobody. He just came out with Freddie versus Jason, and that's it. Fab is innocent. He's from Brooklyn, and that's it. <laughs> Man, so what happens if you see a picture of Emily with her fronts out and Fab admits that he knocked her fronts out? Then what? Then that's sad. I would definitely be sad for her because I think she's a pretty woman. And, you know, in relationships, you know, people go through things. And I think a lot of times... You know, even as a public figure, people got to step the fuck out the way. You know what I mean? Yeah. And mind their business because that's their relationship. We might see a good Halloween picture coming from Emily and Fab, <laughs> you know, in October. So people need to mind their business. You, you know think what I mean? They gonna I got make nothing up? to do with us. You think they're going to make up? Why not? Do you think? Why not? You know, I, hmm? if well, he I don't actually know what the knocked the teeth out, was. Though, yeah. I don't know what the circumstances was, and I'm pretty sure he got a good dentist. You know what I mean? He fixed his chip tooth, didn't he? <laughs> he had more than a chip tooth. Them shits was looking crazy in there. 
But, but, um, but hopefully, you know, it's not what she said it was. You know what I mean? Do you know why it allegedly started? Nah, she I don't was, know nothing. He was, I in, just, he was in L.A. and he found out, I, I believe it was via social media, that she was in L.A. Like, she didn't tell him or nothing. She was supposed to be home. And he found out she was uh, in L.A. possibly creeping with someone. Oh, no, nah, she was definitely creeping. That's why he didn't know she was in L.A. Yeah, but how many times do you think Emily ain't knew where he was? Or that's different from men. You know, it, it happens. You know, as men, I, I give a lot of I give a lot of advice in here to men who deal who have women problems because I try to tell them often. Like one of my friends in here, one of his, his girlfriend had just um, put a picture up of a dude on her Facebook on her social media, basically like, like saying she got a new nigga. He only been in jail for a year, mm -hmm. so you know he was hurt. And I say yo, I say yo, my man, let me ask you a question. How many times have you hurt her? What have you done to her? For, for this type of behavior to happen, you know, most times women don't just do things. It's usually something that happens that causes them to react. You know what I mean? Yeah. He said he got caught a million times cheating. And I say, yo, maybe that's the reaction. You know what I mean? Like, you can't be selfish. You know, a lot of us sit in jail and we hope that our women aren't doing anything. And the thing is that we got to remember we can't be there for our women the way we used to behind this wall, especially sexually active and attention-wise. You can't really... You can't really give her uh, sexual... Can't touch her. Yeah, certain things. You could give her a uh, mental, of course, but, you know, yeah. you know, we, we, we done did some dirt. I'm like, yo, some of these dudes is going to cheat um, the day they girl get locked up. Like, they might find, <laughs> find her cousin attractive. So, yep. for a nigga to be saying something about a girl that's doing something after, yeah, they've been in prison or however many times, it's like, yo, man, just relax, man. Like, stop being selfish. One thing I learned about life is that you can't be selfish. That's one of the things I wanted to tell you, too, because I've been telling everybody this this week. I, you know, I love the shit out of you, Miko, because you're just a real bitch. And I, I don't want to call too. you a bitch because you're a mother and a wife. And, you know, Brent is your wife. And your, I mean, Brent is your husband. That nigga's in the NFL. And I don't want that nigga to bend me up for calling you no bitch. But I got to call you a real bitch because you really are. You know what I mean? Thank and, you. I love you too. And I consider myself I consider myself a real dude. I think that's why I clicked with you as soon as I met you because I just I just got this vibe from you that was just so real. I'm like, yo, Miko is really a real chick and I like the way you had came on the show and represented Brent and shit like that and just your truths. I just mm -hmm. I like to have conversations filled with truths. You know so many people is filled with fantasies, realities mm -hmm. and hyperbole and just different lies. And I try to stay away from that as much as possible. And that's why I was like, yo, I got to tell Miko how much I love her. And you and Jonathan Mena and Alex and just different people, Charlemagne, people have been really holding me down since I've been locked up. Because, you know, when you're here, you get to really see a lot of true colors. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I've heard bad things that people said about me that I was with every day. And I'm like, damn, I never knew people felt that way. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just, it's just, it, it's refreshing to know that you got real people. You know what I mean? Like... You, yeah. you, my therapy. You, Charlemagne. Certain people is my therapy. I'd be like, I gotta call Miko up so I can smile today, or I'm end up doing something to somebody in here. You know what I mean? Well, you know, you can call me whenever. I'll be telling you, keep your hands to yourself, unless you niggas trying to bend you over, disrespect you. I get it. I get, you know, no, protecting your man. So I'll stay away from the Mexicans. They're the only one bending people over in here. But um, I'm done with you, dog. I'm not a wall for them. Nah. I'm done with you, dog. <laughs> Hey, Cardi, uh, Cardi B's album came out yesterday, Invasion of Privacy. She went gold before 24 hours before the, the album was out. And oh, people yeah, are saying, about that yellow, yeah, though. Yeah, people are saying that's cheating. What do you think about, like, how they're doing the singles and counting them as the album sales? Listen, and, all that cheating shit, this is the game now. The hard copies are done. So streaming is this is what it is and you just gotta get hit to the game if you if you're gonna be one of them people that's oh that shit you know this ain't right or that ain't right guess what you're gonna be the person that's not selling so get with the program or don't period yeah i'm proud of cardi b i'm very happy for her um i'm gonna tell my little brother to um go on my phone and, and buy her album 10 times and gift it to people I want to support Cardi B because I'm proud of where she came from. Her being a her being a dancer in New York City and yeah. going through the like trials and, and tribulations ago. she had to go through. Huh? Like a year and a half ago. Hell yeah. Yeah. You know she was one of the around. she was one of the fuck. I think Cardi B was probably like the fifth person I had on my show. Yeah. And she wasn't even rapping yet. She wasn't on Love and Hip Hop. I just always seen something in her, and I'm just happy for her. And I'm happy. She the king of New York right now. You know, she got the city, and I'm just, I'm real proud of her. Well, you know, Takashi 69 says he's the king of New York, and he said the reason is because Cardi got people putting her on. He got nobody putting him on. 
And he said all his well, singles, he got five not, singles in Billboard. He's the nigga with the rainbow hair and the 69 nah, tattoo I've, on I've his face. I've seen a photo of him. Yeah. I like his song. I like the um the song he has, but I'm not, I don't pay attention to shit like that. You know what I mean? Because the 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 fact of the matter is that you can't call yourself the king of New York if someone is sitting right here being the king of New York. You understand? Yeah. Cardi's the king right now. She got it. She's doing number wise. She's dropping great records. She got the energy. The women love her. You know what I mean? I feel like I feel like Cardi's Cardi's that shit. You know what I mean? Takashi got a good record. I like the record he has on um I don't know which one it he is. He got like five like of them on Billboard. Top. I yeah, can't I even lie. But <laughs> I don't listen to his music, to though, a, but somebody's king, listening. I don't, I don't think he's the king. I don't think nobody, no man in the industry from the city right now deserves the 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 work, the, the, king, well, the king status. Man. I mean, I like A Boogie. He's my favorite I like A right Boogie, now. too, but A Boogie ain't no king either. <laughs> That's, I like one Davies, album. Davies ain't no king either. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they're not kings, like, you know what I mean? So for him to even step up and say he's the king, it's like, come on, relax. But, you know, you, you're entitled to, to believe you are whoever you are because you got to remember the majority of the world is wearing masks anyway. So, That's you know, true. Halloween is, is, is 365 year. for some people. So, you know, All year. whoever you want to believe you are, you know what I mean? Um, you, Shout out to Safari, too, man. Oh, I, I just you heard, heard he Safari got robbed. on the radio. He got robbed. And one shout of the out, niggas is his homie. Shout out to Safari, man. Word. One of the niggas that robbed him is his homie. Yeah, I heard. That's usually what it is. I always tell people, if you ever get robbed, especially like your house, it's somebody that knows you, you know what I mean? It's yeah. hard for somebody to know where things are in, they ho in your house if they've never been there. So friends is the people that you always got to watch, you know what I mean? So yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm sorry. I, I like Safari, and I really just started liking Safari, like the beat. Probably about a year now, just watching him because I realized how much Safari is himself. Yeah, he's never being nobody else, yeah. and that's beautiful. And that's what I love in people is for people to be themselves and all who they are. I used to joke on him all the time, but the more and more I watch and just see how he moves, and it's like we need to embrace Safari, we need to champion Safari because it's people like him who's actually being himself, and he's not trying to be nobody else and, and sell falsehoods to the kids and everybody else. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. We he need is. people like him. He's a breath of fresh air. Yeah. Remember, you was mad at me when I told you Russell Simmons allegedly raped a woman, and she was saying that he said, "I'm gonna rape you or your son." Well, he yeah. has come out and said he got nudes and all types of shit from her after the alleged rape. So how he raped her? Man, <laughs> that rape rape shit is very a touch. It's a touchy subject, and. I don't like giving my opinion on it too much because you don't want to shame the victim or if there was a victim. But from the, from what I get from Russell, Russell is a very peaceful dude. You know what I mean? He's a very peaceful dude. Is he a sexual being? Yes. I'm a sexual being. This call is from a federal prison. I don't think he's a violent person. I don't think he would lift a finger to, to hurt anyone. You know what I mean? And I just hope that he, he gets, you know, acquitted of and this blame game stops because it seems like this year, well, not this year, 2016, was the year of championing the victims, of being a victim and making victims seem cool. Now, I'm not saying victims are bad, but it's like it's like this cool thing to be a victim now. It's like, yo, hey, I'm a victim too. Let's have this victim party. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, it's like yo, Once you're where, accused, are you, you can't a even take it back too. If it's not yeah, even true. Yeah, it's like... Does, is nobody being held accountable for these accusations? A lot of these shits are false accusations. Like, do they go to jail? Do they lose their company? Or do I lose my company because I might have grabbed a girl's ass when I was 19 years old in high school and I'm 45 years old and I've done so much for the world? Do I lose my company because of that? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I want to know, like, when does this stop? It's getting kind of out of hand, you know what I mean? And I just, I pray for the, for the women that's, that's being done dirty and for the men that's being done dirty. And there it is, tax season, bitches. Before my nasty hoes, yeah, I'm across the globe. Cause for my nasty hoes, yeah, I'm across the globe. Look, now I say luxury apartment. I'm young and I'm hardly. There's a vision in my vision, that bitch is a target. Lawyer is a Jew, he gon' chew up all the charges. No matter if you fuck with me, I get money regardless. That guap, guap, get some chicken, guap. Boy, please, whatever. Bitch, you can flex. Get some money, hope. 
tell me why you stressed. <laughs> what up, though? Hi. I think today's April 8th, 2018. Welcome to the I Heart Miko podcast. I am I Heart Miko, for those of you that are stupid as fuck. But um, hey, I'm back again, episode 111. Um, how you guys been? I've been good. I know that uh, last week I had my very first on-camera episode. It's on my YouTube channel. I have an actual YouTube channel now. Um, please, please, please go check it out and subscribe. It won't just be my podcast. I will try to yank all of my interviews and anything cool about me, even some not cool things about me. You know, I'm not ashamed of showing flaws because a bitch is flawed. But um, I'm going to have a lot of content on there and um, it'll be pretty much a one-stop shop for all videos and things until a bitch gets her own website to pop in and then you'll have that as well. But um, shout out my girlfriend, Alicia, for helping me do that. Um, it's I Heart Miko. If you, if you search I Heart Miko, it should come up. But if you search Miko Grimes as well, it should come up. Um, but how you guys doing? Hey, 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 welcome back. I'm feeling all green. You see the green? I'm just kidding. But I got green nails, got a green shirt. I'm just feeling real good right now. Bitch is feeling paid for real. This is about money. It's about money. Let me not lie. I'm feeling good. My nigga's paid. I, I had a conversation with my other homegirl the other day, and she was telling me, it's like a flashback conversation where she was telling me that um, a bunch of her coworkers and people that she know from a few years ago, they used to, they knew that we were friends and they would come to her and say things like, why don't you tell your homegirl to shut up? She's, she's interfering with her husband's career. He's, she's going to get him kicked out of the league. She's going to make it so that nobody signs him. This is when all the dolphin stuff was going on, whatever, you know, and then here we go three years later, $26 million later, 26 million. Yes, at age 35 now, he's getting 10 million a year. You fuck niggas have to be quiet, okay? I'm sick of it. Because I'm waiting, I keep waiting for the day that I'm going to ruin his career. All I keep doing is getting checks, my nigga. My nigga's balling still. People still want him to play, and he's still getting paid. So let's kill that shit, okay? Let's kill the whole Miko. It's going to ruin his career. She's going to ruin everything and his money. Knock it off. You sound stupid as fuck right now. And she is running back to her friend saying, remember what you had said? Remember that? Do you remember that? Because I remember that, my nigga. I remember everything you fuck niggas say. And the shit is laughable now. It's laughable. I'm pretty sure Cardi B had the same similar situation. People laughing at her, making fun of her for being a stripper and wanting to be a rapper. Because a lot of people try to do that. Well, guess what, my nigga? She fucking did it. Okay? She fucking did it. She's the fucking king of New York. Not queen. She's the king of New York. Okay? An ex-stripper with bad grammar. My nigga, that's his... She do all that type of shit. And now she has finally announced that she's pregnant. I was so over this shit. Like, Cardi, come on, my nigga. We know you pregnant. You have naked your whole life. And in the last six months, you've been wearing all these covered up fashion over outfits. It's covered up. Come on, my nigga. You're pregnant. It's cool. But she finally announced it on Saturday Night Live. So thank you so much, Cardi, because I was getting mad at you, my nigga, because you're too real for this type of fuck shit. But Cardi's pregnant. We all knew she's having the baby. She has the number one album. She went gold the first within the first 24 hours. And I know people are like, no, it doesn't count. Streaming the way it's happening right now. Is, so what, my nigga? So what? That's how it is. That's why I'm doing a podcast. Years ago, I wouldn't be able to do this. When I got fired from the radio, I would have had to go find another fuck nigga at a radio station to give me a job. I don't have to do that anymore. Now I can create my own radio. Look at this. This is the Miko Grimes radio station, my nigga. We lit over here. And all I need is for my people to listen to me. I don't care to, to give my content to people that don't like me or that don't want to hear it. They'll eventually get here. But I'm going to entertain those that are here now and appreciating a real bitch. Like, that's just what I am. And this Bickin' Head song, she's talking about me. I'm Bickin' Head. This is my era. Boy, please, whatever. That shit... Hey, three six mafia don't get the credit they deserve because I feel like a lot of niggas is remixing their songs. I'm seeing, I'm hearing a lot of shit with these six mafia, and they, they, I hope they just collecting checks. Fuck it, who cares? Um, shout out to Tax. I know y'all heard Tax in the beginning. It's Tax season. Uh, I told him that I want to try to have him on every week if possible because I know that y'all miss him and you love hearing his content. 
I can't always discuss some of this rap shit. I don't, I'm, it's not my lane. Okay, my nigga, it's not my lane. I'm a real bitch. I can tell you when some shit is not my lane and I shouldn't be speaking on it because I don't have the content. So I'm going to try to have Beloved on as many times as possible so that you can get his input on all these hip hop and cultural things that I just don't really, I ain't got it. And I'm not afraid to say that. And a lot of sports reporters will talk about a player or talk about a team and they don't know a fucking thing about them. They, they were, people don't want to say, I don't have, I don't, I don't got it. And I'm one of the bitches that will say, I ain't got it. I ain't got the information. I don't have it. Like I was saying, just let me know if you want more or less. Doesn't matter. I'm probably going to make up my own mind and do what the fuck I want to do anyways. But, I mean, I thought I'd ask. Uh, it's tax season. It is tax season. If I was to pan over to my right, you would see hella just shit. Like, it's a lot of work over there. I'm not going to show y'all. But it's a lot of work that needs done. And a part of that is my taxes. So uh, my financial advisor, he'd be listening to my podcast. So Robbie, guess what? A bitch is going to need an extension this year, okay? Because I ain't got it. I ain't ready. I ain't ready for tax season. I ain't ready for none of this shit. But um, I'm having a good time, though. Last week, last week was spring break for Aiden. Um, it's the last spring break of the year. Um, he has the very last one and he wanted to go to LA so bad and hang out with his LA friends and stay at the house. And I was like, Aiden, you know, your friends play team sports. They're not on spring break. It's kind of gonna be a waste of time. It's going to be me, him and his dad hanging out. So I was like, why don't we just stay home and hang out here? So, uh, Monday Brent took him to Dave and Buster's, uh, Tuesday, we had like a mommy and me pool party, just me and him outside. Wednesday we took him bowling. Thursday we took him to Top Golf. Where this nigga was hitting the ball like like he's done it before. It was so dope to see him playing playing golf. That shit was pretty cool. And then on Friday he went to see uh, Pacific Rim. He would see Pacific Rim with Granny. He had a date night with Granny. And Saturday morning him and Daddy flew to New Orleans for WrestleMania. He this is like a lit ass spring break. Let me tell you. So yesterday he got to do like the whole wrestling experience where they let you set your own intro like to the ring or whatever. And I'm going to post the video of Aiden. You know, he has his own ring injuries that he would do if he were a wrestler. And it's just so cute. It's so cute because Aiden, he's such a man. He's like a grown up. You know, like he really like thinks like a grown up. He talks like a grown up. And so I always love when there's certain things that he does and he likes that are childlike, like wrestling. He believes wrestling is still real. Like he really thinks it's real. And so we're allowing him to hang on to that. Just like we let him hang on to Christmas, uh, the Easter bunny, all Easter tooth fairy, all this dumb made up bullshit. We let him figure it out, like whether it was real or not. So we're going to allow him to to figure out wrestling. And I think it's a, a good opportunity for him and his dad to bond and have like some, some guy time, I guess. Like they, you know, I'm not there to, to bug them about, you know, not smacking when they eat and using silverware and napkins. I hate when I make them like eat like human beings and they want to eat like savages. So, and then they can eat whatever they want to like without me harassing them about it. So, you know, they're, it's, it's a good weekend for them. And I, and I hope Aiden had a really good spring break. I had fun. It was, it was so much fun reliving spring break with my little guy. And I hope that every year we do this, we have the same thing every year where we just hang out together, man. Eventually, it's going to change. He's going to have his friends. He's going to start having hoes. I don't know what I'm going to do, you guys. I don't know. what I'm not, I don't know, but I'm just going to enjoy this time with my little guy as much as possible because the shit does go fast. Um, but, yeah, that's what I did for the week um, and prepared for the show. Um, I have uh, Clipper Daryl joining me today, and I also have Jason Braddock, who covers the Texans. A bunch of Texans fans were in my mentions on Twitter wanting to know what they thought about, what, what, what someone thought about, you know, their offseason moves and who they should get in the draft, who they should still get rid of. So since I don't know, since I'm a fan of saying I don't know because I don't watch anything with the Texans, the only reason I was even entertaining them recently is because the bitch almost became a Houston Texan. So I was all up in they shit, but when I figured out we weren't going there, I stopped caring. So hopefully Jason can come on and care. And give you guys what you need. Clipper Daryl is going to come on and talk to us about the Clippers organization. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And um, and we're just going to have a fun show, man. We're going to have a good time. I got some video popping. I'm, I'm trying to be cute. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm trying. 
Um, cause I'm on camera and shit. I lay my edges down a little bit. I don't know if y'all could tell, but I don't never lay my edges down, my nigga. I don't, I lay my edges down for important reasons. So I hope y'all appreciate it. And I hope y'all appreciate this goddamn show. You know what I'm saying? So let's just get it started. We're going to have Clipper Dale first and we're going to rock this thing. Hello. Police department, may I help you? The police department, man, fuck 12. Okay. First of all, <laughs> fuck 12. <laughs> How are you? Man, I'm doing wonderful. I'm doing wonderful. My team ain't doing good, oh, but I'm man. doing wonderful. Oh, man. You can't do nothing about that. You you don't make a layup. You don't get to shoot no free throws. You can just be there and support. Now, um, a lot of people don't really know who you are, so I need you to introduce yourself to my listeners and to the world, too, because this shit is going to hit the world, Craig. <coughs> man, I'm the L.A. Clippers super fan, man. I'm the one that got the guy in the red and blue suit that gets the crowd hyped up, man, and cheered his team on to a victory. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so a lot of people um, see you from time to time, but they don't really know the story. So can you give my listeners a, like, a little bit of insight on how you became Clipper Daryl, how it all started? When did you start wearing the suits? Like, like give, them, give them a little bit of history of Clipper Daryl so we can know a little bit more about you. You know, it, 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 I got fired from a job. And you know how you get fired and a guy tells you never off. mount? <laughs> no, he actually it was on my day on. And, okay. And he, he told me I'll never mount anything in life without him. Oh. And exactly. Without him. Uh-huh. But cause he was my best friend. Oh. So exactly. The homie. The homie. Uh, so you know how you go home, sit on the couch, man, turn the TV on. Mm-hmm. Cooper game comes on. He said the same thing about them, how horrible they was, how they didn't amount to anything. I said, this is going to be my team. We're going to ride and die together. Uh. And so that's how I became a Clipper fan. What year was this, though? Like, because I know the Clippers 19, came. 19, 19, 1992. So this started in 92. Yes. Okay. Then, then uh, eight years later, when I could actually afford the tickets, we acquired Darius Miles. Mm. We acquired Darius Miles. I said, man, I got to get me some season tickets now, man. I'm excited, man. This is going to be off the chain. Right. So um, I went I went, acquired my seats, uh-huh. went down there and looked at them, got my seats, and I'm ready to, I'm ready to go now. Okay. And so okay, you've been, the, have you been a t- season ticket holder since then? Like you've been literally yeah. a season ticket holder since that long, in the same seats, or have you moved around? In, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the same seats. Okay. 18 se- in 18 seasons, I've only missed two Clipper home games. Wow. That's dedication. Like, <laughs> my nigga, that's – well, you know, I have to tell you, I'm dedicated to my husband too, and that's some serious-ass dedication right there. That's real. So, and then when the suit came about, it was when um, – um, actually, the name came when – the day, the day came first because everybody used to call because uh, when I, I was so excited, I've been like this, I've been energetic and stuff like this since the fourth grade. So seeing my team and cheering for my team was, man, was a no brainer for me. It was in me. So I used to dance in the aisles. You know, I you hear that song, Are You Ready For This? By Two oh Unlimited. Oh my God, yeah. So you wanted niggas and in I, the aisle and you was twerking? Yeah. <laughs> I was Robot working in the aisle. Shit, all types of shit, I bet. <laughs> they put me on, they put me on a jumbo try. Uh huh. They they put me on a jumbotron, and the crowd went crazy. They played me back in slow motion, and the oh. crowd went bananas. Nigga, they right? ain't have you roboting in slow motion. <laughs> oh man, I was... like, nigga, they they ain't have you like. It was hey, it was it was so exciting. So every game from then on, they every time the song came on, the cameraman used to look for me. There you go. Oh, that's dope. And and that's how that's how I became. So and then so. I started off with the dancing man for a couple of years. Everybody kept calling me dancing man, dancing man, dancer. You ain't like that. Man, no, what happened is uh, my boy Dave Smith from 1540 Ticket at Corn Dog, they used to do this little remote at the Palms at the Palms restaurant. Mm-hmm. So they said, man, Daryl, they said, man, I'm tired of calling you dancing man. We got to come up yeah, with a thing. Yeah, that's corny. That was a little corny. Yeah. So <laughs> they said, so they sat there and they sat there. And they, they did a little remote just for me. They was they was calling, letting all the callers call in. And like we was getting different names and stuff like that, right? Uh-huh. 
And then Horn and Dave looked at each other. He said, Clipper Daryl. Mm. And they looked at each other, and I said, hey, that's, that's a nice little ring to it. Right. right? And that's how I came, Clipper Daryl. Okay. And, you know. And you just been so, doing it ever since. How many suits do you have? Because I see, I feel like whenever I see you, you're in a different suit. I see you at the Drew League all the time. I'll be like, how many suits do you have? I got six suits of Only the regular six. logo. Six of the regular okay, ones. Okay, of the regular logo. And that was the old logo. The new logo, I got two. Okay. And then um, I got, actually, Corey McGetty just got me a new one. Oh, my God. I used, to, I used to you, braid you, his hair when he was a clipper. Yeah. I used to be his braider. I wonder if he remembers me. That's crazy. Yeah, of, course, of course he will. <laughs> Corey just got me one done, an all-white one. Ooh. Red vest, red tie. Off the chain, girl. Oh, my God. I already <laughs> so, know how you're going to be acting, but... But now, now it, it, I, I'm not sure. I'm looking. I'm looking on NBA.com, and it, 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 are they even going to make the playoffs? Is there a chance? Oh no, we out. Y'all out. It's we a wrap. Out. You're done. It's a wrap. So when we are you done. gonna get to wear this white suit next year? No, actually, I, I've already worn it. Oh, you so have. I wore you wore it this year. Yeah, I wore it this year already. You know. Okay. And uh, so you know, but the other suits came about. The, the reason why I did the other suits because we're it. The year 2005, 2006, they call it the Allen Iverson rule now. Oh. But they remember, remember the NBA yes. made yes. everybody what, no more jerseys better. on no, the bench. No more three XTs. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you couldn't do all the, the hood shit. And they, they really, Allen Iverson did change the NBA. Look, I'm playing with my bobblehead Allen Iverson right now. <laughs> Look at my boo, y'all. Let me bring this camera down so they can see my my little bobblehead boo. Say, hey, Iverson. But yeah, <laughs> so they he did so, change the NBA. So the NBA said that the players could no longer wear jerseys. They had to wear, you know, coat and ties. So I said, you know what? If the, if the players got to do it, why not the fans? So I went downtown, man, and bought me two. I bought me two suits, two of everything, two shirts, two ties, two everything, and took it to the tailor upstairs and said, cut it in half and put it together. Oh, my <laughs> and he God. Me, he said, are you serious? I said, yeah, this is what I want to do. So they measured me up. I bought a size too big for it, for they can you know measure it right. Uh huh. Put it on, and man, and went down there. Uh, called called the uh, organization. You know, make sure it was okay for me to uh, you know to wear the logos and stuff like that. They approved it. Everything. So you got permission. You know that that would probably never happen in the NFL. The yeah. NBA is way more cool and accepting, yeah. and you know they they know their crowd, and and they it just mm-hmm. seems like they're just a little bit different. So that was dope that they allowed you to do that because a lot of billionaires, well, mm-hmm. what they're they're greedy. They wouldn't even let you have that little bit, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of dope that they even appreciated you and the fan that you were and let you wear the logo like that. That's pretty lit. Yeah, so that's when I brought out the suit. But if you ever talk to Sam Cassell, right, mm-hmm. you say, hey, Sam, what you think about Cooper Durrell, right? The first thing he's going to say, because that was the year that we acquired him, mm-hmm. he's going to say, man, I made Cooper Durrell. I made Cooper Durrell. <laughs> oh, he said he made you. Yeah, he tell made, him to make made. another you. <laughs> tell him that. <laughs> you tell him use the Jay-Z line, make another me then, nigga. No, it's funny. Oh, yeah, my so, God. So, so that, and, then, and then that summer, I said, man, I gotta give, I gotta give some back because what happened during that whole year when we, when I did this year, mm-hmm. we went to the playoffs with San Cassell. So game seven, I went to the, went to the airport to cheer my team on to a victory, man. I said, man, we gonna do this, man. So I'm at the airport leaving church. My boy Eddie called me. He said, man, let's meet the guys down at the airport. So I got there first, and I'm waving. I'm like, yeah, let's go, baby, let's go. Okay. Donald Sterling. Donald Sterling, oh Donald P. Sterling, the owner, walks up to me and said, "Hey, hey, Clipper Daryl. He said, "How you doing?" I said, "You know, do you know who I am?" I said, "Of course, I know who you are." Right, like, yeah, <laughs> nigga, I know who you are. <laughs> he said, "Man, how would you like to ride on a team flight?" Oh. So I'm like, so I'm in, I'm in, I'm, I'm in awe. I'm like, man, wait a minute, was you even there. packed? Were you packed? I wasn't packed. Nothing. Oh, he just said, "Hop on." That's hop that's on. some billionaire shit right there. Hop on <laughs> and just shop when you get there. Like he had no clue. Like you talking to a, a a common man, not somebody that could just hop on unless he fit in the whole bill. Like did you ask him that? Are you fitting the whole bill, Mister Sterling? <laughs> hey, I didn't know. So 
I jumped on the plane, man. I'm excited, man. You know, I'm excited. I'm jumping on the plane, man. And I said, I ain't got my suit. He said, man. And so I called my guy that was coming down there because was, we were going to game seven. Anyway, I was, we was driving down. Okay. So I had my guy go pick my suit up at mm. the house. You know what I'm saying? I called my wife and I, and I, 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 I said, make sure you give, you know, Damien my suit. Because we, hey, I, I, Donald Trudy just put me on the plane. <laughs> She probably was lit as hell. She probably was like, ah, why am I not going? What the hell? You done left her behind. Oh, uh, no, she, she don't do sports. Oh. She don't do the sports thing. She, she would have. She would have if she knew she was going to ride on the damn plane with the team, I bet. Yeah, so that, that was so excited. So excited. So when I get, so I get on the plane, we ride, and I'm sitting next to Elgin Baylor's daughter and the doctor, so we, we, we compensating and stuff. So I just thought, you know, having on being on the plane, you know, I talked to a few people, seen the players, and I didn't really think. I said, okay, I get to the airport. I mean, I get to the airport, and I, I call my sister, and I was gonna go stay with her. Donald Sterling walks up to me, he says, "Hey, girl, I just got you a room here at the Ritz, and uh, I want you to go up, freshen up, and meet me over here at the Ritz Carlton. I mean, at uh, I'm sorry." We was already at the Ritz Carlton. Meet me at Morton's, the steakhouse. You're going to be my guest for dinner tonight. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so, hey. Listen. Listen. A dude, a dude from the hood. Right. A dude, a That's dude what I'm thinking hood. about. That's exactly what I'm like. Listen, <laughs> beloved. Like, come on, dog. This is dope. This is dope. This is like a fan's dream. This is dope. Know? Yeah. This is pretty so, dope. I can't front. But let me tell you, I ain't never been in the Ritz Carlton in my life. <laughs> right. Okay. So I walk in my room, I get my key, I walk in my room, man, this thing is, I'm like, oh! So now, I seen the robe and slippers, right? I didn't even touch it. Nah, <laughs> he was I like, stole. man, they not finna <laughs> say I stole nothing. <laughs> exactly. So, man, it was so funny. So I went, I went downstairs and had dinner with the whole front office, man, to the president, Elgin wow. Baylor was there, his daughter, his wow. wife. I'm, I'm sitting next to Donald Sterling. I had uh, Ralph Lawler and his wife, uh, Coach Dunleavy and his wife. I mean, <laughs> excuse me, it's a fan dream. Yeah. You know. Is that, then, did that motivate you to just be even more of a fan? Do you yeah, think? But let me tell you, let me tell you how it motivated me, right? Now, after all that happened, Elton uh-huh. Brand gave me tickets to the game. We uh-huh. were losing it. We, we lost the game, so we came back home. Of course y'all did. And I, <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so this hot motivated me. So that summer, I'm sitting in the house, and, you know, I'm a car dealer. I, have, I, I got a dealer's license, so I buy and sell cars all the time. I had a white BMW in my driveway. Mm-hmm. And I said, man, this might make a good Clipper car. Oh my God! You have a Clipper car? Yeah. So to honor to honor Why Donald you got Sterling, a to put me on that. Go ahead, my bad. For, for, to honor Donald Sterling for putting me on that plane and giving a fan a dream of a lifetime, mm-hmm. I made a Clipper car. The Clipper car looked just like my suit, half and half. Oh wow! The, in, the interior was inside and out. Mm-hmm. You know, if you Google it, if they Google it, if your listeners Google it, uh, the Clipper Daryl's car, the Clipper's car, you will see it. Inside and out, I mean, and then all the players, including Donald T. Sterling, signed the hood of the car. Wow. Yeah. So after he, I mean, obviously, you know what happened with Donald Sterling, how he was removed from his um, ownership uh, mm-hmm. position. Hearing this, I mean, I don't know. If what you think of him, do you think he's a racist or do you think that, you know, he's just a rich white man that don't care about people? Because some people are like, he's not a racist. He just says things that a lot of white people with money say, like there's a difference between being a racist and doing that. And I, I, I know the history of him and how he's a slumlord and how he treated, you know, blacks and minorities. But does this cha- did that change your perspective of him when he gave you like that ultimate fan gift? Like, did that make you think any different of him? No, not at all. No. You still think not he's a racist? Nope. You don't? Never thought he was a, you never, never thought, thought he was a racist. racist? Okay. Never thought that. You know what I'm saying? I said the experiences that I've had with Donald Sterling has been off the chain. 
Now, I could tell you that I could tell you another experience. Donald couldn't make it to a game one day. Well, wait, we can't go yeah. into too many experiences, okay? Because we can't be on too long. I'm, I'm trying to keep uh, my podcast short, and I definitely don't want to keep talking about it because I think the niggas are racist, personally. Okay. And this goes before he was a Clipper owner. This came okay. into play with his real estate dealings and him hiring him, him going and buying all the property in the low income urban communities and um, being a slumlord, you know, know, knowing that if you're buying Section 8 properties and those type of things, you're dealing with people with low income. And then if you just choose to not keep their water on, or if they have mold and bad pipes and, you know, plumbing issues and you just say, I don't give a fuck about them and you make racial, you know, jokes or gestures or comments, people are going to think that about you. You know, yeah. that's just, you know, what we think. Do we all know? No, I can guess because I feel like a lot of billionaires that are white are, are racist and they, they come from a racial, a racist background because their money is handed down to them. So are their values in life are handed down to them. So that's what I think. But I definitely liked hearing this story about him actually, you know, giving someone who is very dedicated to his team and, um, you know, loyal this opportunity. That That is, you know, that's a good thing. I, 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 I got to clap him up. That's that's a dope thing that he did. And, and, and I'm going to just, you know how you just leave good pieces of people in your memory? Like, you, you have a lot of bad ones, but I can always run back to that good memory now of Donald Sterling. If I ever hear that he, he you know, something happened, you know, he'd be like, you know what? He did treat Clipper Daryl with the ultimate respect. So let's just let him have that. Let's move on from this motherfucker. How about that? <laughs> let's move on for him. But I want to talk to you about the Clippers organization as a whole. You know, everyone calls you guys the, the redheaded stepsister of Los Angeles. I know you know that. As a fan, I've I be, I've become a fan of players, so I've had stints in my life where I was a Clipper fan, I was a Darius Miles fan, I was a Lamar Odom fan, I was a Corey Maggette fan, I am definitely a, t- a, um, a, a Lou Will fan. I had moments where I was a Chris Paul fan. What has it been like to be a huge fan of a team that people consider the redheaded stepsister of Los Angeles. I mean, you guys are playing in the same stadium as the Los Angeles Lakers, who people argue is one of the best organizations in basketball. Like, what is it like? I mean, I mean, for me, it's wonderful for me, man. You know, I mean, I don't have a problem. I mean, it's easy to cheer for a winning team. It is. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It takes a true fan for any for any fan to cheer for a team that loses all the time. Yeah, you're right. You know what I'm saying? That's definitely true. So that's what I that's why I tell people how. You know, everybody say, oh, you know, girl, you've been doing this a long time. Like, I got respect in, in L.A. from everybody, from, from, I mean, from that, actually from all NBA teams where people look at me and they say, girl, you've been loyal to this team forever, man. Mm-hmm. You know, we appreciate everything you do. So you, when you hear that from other GMs, from other teams mm-hmm. and other fans from other teams, I know I'm doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I tell people, yeah, we can all, we can all be Laker fans. Yeah, but it was, it was it was my experience that mm-hmm. I went through of me being fired from a job on why I became a Clipper fan, and I don't and I'm a, I'm a loyal dude, so I don't I don't just give up, you know. Mm-hmm. And we made we made we made the playoffs when I first started. Yeah, then we had our ups and downs, we had our trials and tribulations, but I'm never going to give up on this team at all. Okay, respect. So let me ask you this: What is the problem? with the Clippers. If you, you've been a fan, you've, I know you know people in the front office, you've met every coach, you've talked to players and, you know, without giving any names, cause I'm able to, you know, speak about things in organizations without giving names and, and putting people out there. What do you think the true issue is with the Clippers and why they can never get over the hump? We have no structure. We have no system. We have no identity. We don't have no plays <laughs> in order for us to win we have to have well, Nigga, that. you said they ain't got no plays. What you, yeah. mean, what you mean by plays? I'm saying that when, when it gets down to crunch time, right, when it gets uh-huh. down to coaching, that's the truth. Like these last five games of the season went down to coaching, and you see what happened. Mm-hmm. You see, to me, Glenn Rivers is not a great – is not a good coach. He's – He's a coach that likes superstars that can make him look good. Mm. But coaching comes, you know, you, you played the game. Yes. You know? So 
with coaching comes from the last five minutes of the game. Yep. Y'all can do it's, everything the first. Yes. You know? That's when you need your coach, when you need a play, when you need a big moment, when you need a, a, a clear head that knows exactly what to do, whether it's on offense or defense, to put you exactly. in something and everybody believes in it because they trust mm-hmm. the coach and you, everybody's on the same page and, 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 and you, you complete the job, basically. And, and you show me what game in the last five to six seasons that he's been here, you've seen that. Mm. You ain't seen it because everything is free. Hey, here, Chris, save us, please. Here, mm. Blake, can you do something for us, please? Here, Lou Williams, can you do something? It ain't about that. It's about putting people in positions to succeed, to succeed. and and making every making it a team game. And it ain't all about individuals. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He ran a play the first time that I ever seen it. He ran a play for his son the other night. Mm. I was so I was so proud of him because I said <laughs> he played him at his true position, the two or the three. He okay. didn't give the ball to him and let him bring the ball up and make the play. He was a part of the play, and he picked the pop and he made the three. Okay? So mm-hmm. that's, what, that's, that, that's how he should have been playing his son the whole year, the whole season. So do you think that, that, that the coaching, like you, do you think Doc Rivers needs to go? Yes. A yeah. lot of people think this, but what, first of all, he was the GM and the coach. Mm-hmm. So you're literally responsible for, you know, a lot of coaches get to blame the GM and say, well, he's not getting the guys that I want. They're not doing this. Exactly. They're not doing that. Mm-hmm. He's picking the guys. So he has yeah. control over who's coming in. And then he's not able to coach them to the standard of a, a champion or at least, you know, a contender. And, and so now he's no longer GM, right? Exactly. They've no stripped those. So are, do you think that they will strip him from his coaching duties as well? I really hope so. But you I don't really you don't so. but you don't you don't think it's a a, a done deal cuz a lot of people are like, yo, he got to go. You know, I feel that Jerry Jerry West is going to make the great decisions that we need to that we need to make and I think it's going to make the hard decisions. Because guys, these guys going to need a new voice. They can't mm-hmm. continue. If, if you want to go to the next level, because you got to remember, free agents, players don't want to play for guys that been lied to, especially mm-hmm. against their other, other, other players. You know, right, right. Other players talk to each other. Yeah. You know, Doc could tell you he would tell you everything you want to hear, but once you sign on the dotted line, it's something completely every, different. Exactly. So we've had go we've ahead. had five different benches and five different seasons. And none of them been mm. successful, and it, and it, it was all his decision. So either either you don't know what you're doing, or you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you this: so so um, Blake Griffin said uh, he found out like the rest of us when he got mm-hmm. traded. Do you think that that is poor management, like that? A player finding out that he's being traded, your premier player, he is the face of your franchise because you've gotten rid of Chris Paul. Now Blake is the face of your franchise. And so for him to find out that he has been moved via social media, via the Internet, don't you think that's just bad business overall? And, oh, who, yeah, and who's responsible bad. for that? Is this the GM? Who's responsible for the poor communication of letting him know personally so he can you know, let his family know versus – the internet hitting him up like, oh, damn, nigga, have fun in Detroit. Yeah. Exactly. Now, I, I, I felt bad for, uh, for Blake. For the, next, for the next two games after he got traded, I wore all black. Oh. In honor of him. Yeah, I was, I was very upset okay. about that. You know, okay. because procedurally, you don't do that. To me, right. you can go ahead and trade him because that's your team. You can do exactly what you want to do. But the respect of the game, and you want other free agents to come to you, you pick up a phone and say, hey, Blake, we, ap- we appreciate everything you've done for us, man. We had a great deal for you, and we just couldn't pass up, man. Thank you very much for your contribution, and move- we're going to move on. And that's it. Right. Then he can respect it better. Yeah. You see? But when you mm-hmm. go and show that you're going to put his name up, his jerseys in the rafters, and you do this big old presentation for him to make him sign that five-year, $173 million deal, then you do that to him. But see, Blake was stupid. Blake was it, it, it makes black. me think there's something else underneath this story, and I was hoping that you knew some about it because that, that you're right. All of this fanfare, all this fluff that they did mm-hmm. of pretty much, get, first of all, letting Chris go, which we, you know, I feel like that might have been a mutual decision. 
but the, but the Blake one, it makes no sense. And I know I was thinking to myself, is it have something to do with the the the, the punching of you know the breaking the hand with the with the trainer, like all this this drama and mess that he's had, you know, wrapped mm-hmm. around him for the last couple of years. Do you? But they still gave him the contract. So I'm like, what yeah. is it? Like, what what truly is the problem? You know, you, you have to think is is he's a player that you want to 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 uh, lead your team for the future. Mm-hmm. When you look at it, when when I looked at Avery Bradley and I looked at Tobias Harris and what they brought, after that I seen the vision of Jerry West what he wants to do. Okay. And he, what he wanted to do, he wanted to get younger. He got he has to get younger, and you can create your own superstars. You know, like nobody knew who Steph Curry was. I mean, you some know. of us knew. Yeah, some of you, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, but he became it when he first came in the league. He wasn't. A, he, uh, he wasn't, he wasn't that the good. man. Yeah, he because he went to a small, not a small school, but an unknown school, a school that's not yeah. you know in the mouths of everyone during the Final Four and the March Madness and all that kind of stuff. And he kind of put Davidson on the map, you know, a little bit, you know. But but there's a lot of players like that in the league. There's a lot, yeah. and all it takes is the right system and and mm-hmm. the right time. Look at look at the dude that went that left OKC that played with Russ and went over to Indiana. Now he and he made the All Star team. Oladipo. Uh, Ola, yeah, he Come was always now. a baller. Yeah, you know that sometimes you have to stand in people's shadows and, and wait your turn. I feel like Oladipo didn't play well with with Westbrook because a lot of players aren't going to play well with Westbrook. You know, I don't. Mm-hmm. I think I love his game. I love to watch him play, but I. Westbrook's not my type of point guard at all. He, I, w- I wouldn't draft him on my team. And it's not to say he can't play and he's not real as shit. It's just he doesn't play the type of point guard basketball that I would want. And so a lot of yeah. players aren't going to be able to play with him. I agree with that. I you agree know? with that. Yeah. Let, <clears throat> I want to switch subjects real quick because I don't want to hold you too long. But I want to know your opinion on this West because um, as I look at it, and it, it got tight at the end, and it looks like Minnesota and Denver and Oklahoma, San Antonio, New Orleans, Utah, that's a tight little run at the bottom, and this could come down yeah. to the last game. But we, we can – I want to leave the bottom, uh, the bottom five out and talk mm-hmm. about Houston, Golden State, and Portland. <clears throat> We're used to seeing Golden State at the top of the division every year, like easy, like they just cakewalk there. This year we're seeing a little bit different. Houston is is flourishing, 64 wins this year. Portland only has 48, but Portland's giving everybody a problem. You can't just take a game from them. Who do you see coming out of the West this year? I'm going to be honest with you. My sleeper team is Portland. That's, that's yeah, my sleeper team that's your year. sleeper team. That's you think my, they can contend. You think they have it this year? Yes. And why? Because Damian has the ability to say, hey, I need to share this ball. I'm already Damian Lillard. Mm-hmm. So I don't, need to, I don't need to be the man every single game. If you let somebody else be the man, we can win these games. Yeah. You see? So now he's willing to share. He's willing to give up a, l- a little bit of, a, of his game to give it to somebody else. That's all you got to do. Yeah. And that's what I see. That's what I see. Is it enough, though? Because what was what they're going to have to do, we all know that Golden State scores a lot of points. But what mm-hmm. people don't realize about Golden State is they actually play really well defense. So what ends up happening is even if they give up a lot of points, a lot of teams can't keep up. And we've yeah. seen that Houston can keep up. Do you really think Portland can keep up with the numbers in a seven-game series? We're not talking about a one game because, you know, mm-hmm. one game is different than a seven-game series. I'm struggling to think that Portland can do it in a seven game. What I do I think, think they, is Houston can get it done in a seven game this year. This, this, I feel like Houston is the hope for me. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, my sleeper team is, 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 is Portland. But the team that I, that I picked at the beginning of the year, when I seen Chris go to it, was Houston. Mm-hmm. I said that from the jump. And I, I didn't like, believe at first. I just, you know, I didn't believe. I wasn't sure. It, you know, both of them need the ball in their hands, and it's working, so I got to shut the fuck up. I need to be quiet and let people man. work. That was the beginning what I thought. But after seeing Chris miss some time and then James miss some time and then them mm-hmm. getting together and being able to share the ball, Chris is hitting yeah. shots, is less pressure on him, I feel like. And this is good. He's getting old. You know, you exactly. don't need you don't need all those minutes, all that all that time. He ain't dribbling the leather off the ball no more like he did in L.A. Mm-hmm. It looks good. It looks good. Yeah, I mean, 
I could I could see them winning it all this year. Honestly, I could see them. You know, can't even hate Houston on that. And Golden State in the in the, in the finals. Oh, I could see Houston and, and, and Portland. And, you know, in Portland. You know, I don't know how the season is going to be yet, but we know we're going to see. Yeah. You know. That's that's good. Well, I want to I want to switch subjects with you and ask you. Um, I saw um, an interview recently. It was a bunch of old veterans. They were really just talking about uh, the Hall of Fame and some of the, the players that are going in. And the subject switched over. It was Scottie Pippen, um, and um, it was two different. There's two different interviews. Scottie Pippen did an interview about people saying who's the best, Jordan or LeBron, who's the GOAT. And Isaiah Thomas said he thinks that LeBron is the GOAT because LeBron um, does everything well, everything, and Jordan is the scoring machine. And so Scotty flipped that around and said, I mean, we know there's a lot of history b- between all these guys, bad history. So this, these opinions are skewed based on, you know, things that have happened between these people. But Scotty said the reason that – Jordan wasn't the man at everything was because he was he was LeBron on the team and that meant Jordan all he had to do was get buckets on people like flat out get buckets they didn't need him to rebound or to give assists or you know to to just get everybody involved and and run the run the floor run the run the floor like the point guard I don't like to compare these two players. These two players are completely different players. There's a, there's, a, there's a shooting guard, there's an assassin, and then you have a floor general that does just about everything and nobody can stop them. So I don't want to compare them. That's not what I want to ask you. I want to ask you this question because you, you know, an L.A. guy. If I were to put, if I were to compare any players to LeBron James, it would start with Magic. Then it would go to um, Lamar Odom. Scottie Pippen, and then LeBron. So if you had a team, if you had Jordan, let's say you have Jordan on your team, mm-hmm. which of those point forwards would you want to run your team? Corey you got, <laughs> he is not on the damn list. You got to pick for okay. Magic. I'm sorry. I'm the, sorry. Now, when I put Lamar Odom in this category, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'm looking at mm-hmm. what he could have been and what he was supposed to be. Because Lamar exactly. Odom was going to be that uh-huh. nigga, so let's just look at the product of what it should have been in 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 um Lamar Odom, Magic Johnson, LeBron James, and Scottie Pippen. Which one of those point forwards would you want on your team with Jordan? Lamar Odom. Why is that? Because he's a smart player and he doesn't demand the ball, but when you give it to him, he knows exactly what to do with it. And he knows his role on the team. He, he's not, a, he, you know, he'll let he'll let Jordan be Jordan, you know. But you gotta. Everybody has to look at. People wants to say Jordan, and LeBron, and I, I already know. But the comparison is you can't compare because it's right. two different eras. Yes. And it's two different positions as well. And, and and then the rules are totally different, yes. man. Yes. Mm-hmm. The, the game the game is different. How it's played. A lot of things. Exactly. Like you go down, you can go down the middle of the court now and 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 do a layup. You if you did it back when Jordan didn't play, man, you got laid out. <laughs> yeah, you, totally different game. Completely different totally as far different. as just the way things are. Like the game now is more of a finesse game. You actually have to have game. When you look yeah. back, there was a lot of people that just could not play basketball. They were just out here being physical, being aggressive, and fouling the shit out of people. You know, yeah. it was a lot of that in the game. Now, in today's game, because we have guys a lot more point forwards or big men that shoot threes, like we have the Durants, we got the Greek Freak, we got all these guys, Anthony Davis, they aren't just in the post because they're 6'10 and above. These guys exactly. will bring you outside and shoot on you. So it's it's a whole nother game, you know? And, mm-hmm. and, and what I run it back to, I would, I would actually, and I'm a huge Magic Johnson fan, I really am, but I would choose LeBron because – of all of those players, he's the most athletic of them all. Bottom, no, no question. And I think that if the, the, the other most important factor is IQ. And I believe Magic and LeBron have a very similar IQ. The only difference to me is LeBron is bigger. Look at his body. So when yeah. he's able to see something, if it doesn't work out, guess what? LeBron can just go right down the middle like you just hit and get a bucket on anyone. At yeah. any given time. And so that's why I would choose him. 
and, and that's playing with Jordan. That's why I always try to tell people, like, stop comparing Jordan and LeBron. Do a different yeah. type of comparison. Exactly. You know, like, they, like they just do something else. And nobody wants to do that. It's people that hate LeBron that are saying Jordan's the best or people that mm-hmm. hate Jordan saying LeBron's the best. Like, what? like no, mm-hmm. it, 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 that, exactly. none of that should be compared. Just, just leave it alone. Leave the whole discussion. Like, compare Kobe and Jordan. Do that. <laughs> That's a, be- you, a better comparison. And then it ain't no comparison after you think about it. <laughs> yeah, it ain't. Exactly. It, ain't even, it ain't even a discussion. Man, yeah, you can't compare the two. I mean, yeah. the only thing is Kobe idolized Jordan and he got Jordan yeah. ways. It was creepy. You know what I'm that was creepy. Yeah. I want to know how Jordan. How I want to know how Kobe would chew his gum on his own without Jordan showing him. I wonder how Kobe would walk down the court. Like Kobe literally became Jordan, and it was a little creepy to me. Hey, but you know what though? <laughs> it, it, it made it made it made who he is because every child, every kid yeah. wants to be Steph Curry, LeBron James, Kevin Durant. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it, it, if you could hey. be that person, you can get to that next level. Hey, it worked for you. Whatever works. <laughs> and whatever works. Whatever you know? works. I want to get your, before I let you go, because we, we've been on here almost 40 minutes, I want to get your opinion on um, some of the things that are happening in America with black uh, people, the police. I, I, I want to hear from you what you think about um, us being jailed, being murdered, you know, Stefan Clark was just recently uh, murdered up up north in mm-hmm. in Cali, and um, it's probably going to be the same turnout as before. No jail time. You know, he they said he had a gun. It was a cell phone. They got scared. Boom, boom, boom. Twenty shots. Eight of them, six of them in his back. Crazy. Mm-hmm. What is your opinion on the state of America and the black man? What I feel, I do a lot of work with LAPD. I do mm-hmm. a lot of ride-alongs. I, I work with the chief. I talk to a lot of people. You, you, you're in a bad position because what I want people to understand is this. When they're getting a call in their ears, right, mm-hmm. and all they hear is man with a gun or a burglary suspect, they're just getting, the, uh, they're getting everything in their ear that, y'all don't, that, that the public don't get to hear mm-hmm. on the call. Man with a blue, uh, white T-shirt, blue jeans, and that's what they're going on. Now, when the cop says freeze, hold your hands up high. Why, why are you reaching for your cell phone? I mean, they can't guess. You know, I feel bad for the family. But if you're reaching for a cell phone and that's all you you pulling out, what happened if he would have pulled out a gun? What could have happened then? They, so Go ahead. In my... In, 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 in my situation of, of me being around them yeah of course there are bad cops out there that want to see you know but 95 percent of them are good cops you know what i'm saying you just gotta you know it's just like having a bad family member compared to a good family member but we're talking about murder you can't talk about a bad family member and a good family member when we're actually talking about people dying that's different but when you but what i'm saying is it's okay put yourself in the position right mm-hmm when, when when the cops get called out, right? If you if you walk in your home, right, and there's a man in your home, are you going to ask questions? He's not supposed to be there, and okay, I then. and I am not a trained professional. That's the difference. Mm-hmm. If you are a trained professional, you're supposed to de-escalate any situation. I think that the police are escalating situations because they're pussy. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I mean. You know, we got some that are. Yeah. But then you got a lot that are not. You know, that's why you have to look at the whole situation and mm-hmm. figure it out. The whole, you know, you got to get his side of the story and then hear the other side of the story. Look at the film. Because if you ever notice when you look at film, you never get the beginning or you never get the end. Whose fault you is always that? Just get the, you, I don't know what happened. <laughs> It's the police department's fault. They have the film. This is my thing. Uh-huh. Anytime someone is shot in the back and they're unarmed, it, you're, uh-huh. you have made a mistake. I don't mm-hmm. care what you thought they had. If you think someone has a gun, let me give you a perfect example. If you think some, you got a call in your ear that someone has a gun and they're going around town, you know, 
causing fear amongst other people. And let's say you approach this suspect, okay? And you say, freeze, get on the ground. If that suspect then turns to run away from you, why do you think that it is okay to shoot them? Regardless whether they have a gun or not. If they are running away from you, the police should be trained to chase or let them go. And, and, and they're supposed to be tactics. They're supposed to be, they're supposed to be problem solvers. Like, like I watched First 48 and cops. There's supposed to be some type of detective work to catch this person. The bullet is not the only answer. That is not how you catch someone. And that's what I think that our police are doing today. They are lazy. They are untrained. They are pussy. And so whenever something happens, they have a, they have a, a vest on. What is the vest for? That is so that if someone does, you, you have signed on to put your life on the line for that bullshit check that they give you. That's your bad. You don't, it, nothing, you don't have to go to college. You don't have to have any type of further education to be a cop. That's why you get that low check, but they give you a vest so that if someone does shoot you in a major or important part of your body, you can survive. But instead of you thinking of it like that, to me, the police are more on, well, I got to kill him. Because I'm scared. I'm nervous. Who wants these scary ass cops policing their streets? You might get shot. That's what you signed up for. You're chasing around bad guys, but you're becoming the bad guy, in my opinion. Yeah. And, you know, and and in some instances, they are. But then you got to look at a guy gets shot in the back, right? But he's shooting back at you or he's pointing the gun back at you while he's running. What do you do then? If there's no, if you're being shot at, you shoot. But these, no one has shot at either one of these cops. Every mm. single murder, I would say in the last five years that I can mm. think of, I don't recall anyone actually having a gun and they got shot. And the cop said he had something. I thought he was going to kill me. I feared my life. And then we find that there is no gun and there's bullets in their back. That can't be it's- explained. And, and, and you know what, As a, and, and, and I feel exactly what you're saying, and I, and I see exactly what you're saying. Some, some, some of these shoots are valid shoots. Some of these shoots are not, you know. But what we have to do, we have to educate mm-hmm. them, and we have to educate our kids, our black kids, of saying when, they, when a cop says stop, you hold your hands up high. That, that gives them the relief. That they're not in fear anymore. Mm-mm. But if you in, if you in your pocket, if you're in your pocket or you taking off running, that puts any anybody in fear. Or you coming at them. I hear you. you to- I hear you. But uh, let me just tell you this as well. I have seen t- this week probably ten videos of white people and a cop mm-hmm. saying freeze, and they're running up on them, swinging on them, punching them, and these cops are like, stop doing that. I'm going to have to shoot you. I'm going to have to. I'm going to. I might. I'm finna. I'm. They don't do that with us, okay? Mm-hmm. We don't get those chances. We don't get those, get to wrestle with them. I've seen white people, white cops wrestling with white people so many goddamn times. I'm like, damn, when am I going to see them wrestle with a black man? They never but do. This, they shoot us. But this is, this is my biggest, and, and I was talking to the chief about this. And I was real about this one. The problem that I feel that I see is that if you ever notice the sheriff doesn't don't have bad shoots as many bad shots, I mean, bad shoots as the LAPD or police departments, because they go they go to them jail houses first. I think these LAPD need to go sit in the jail systems first to get the fear out. They're not going to do that. They need more cops. They need them coming. They're not going to train them. They need them out here. They're just going to throw them in a uniform and give them the gun and say, here's your area. And, and, and just make sure. And, and then their whole goal is getting home alive to their family. They don't give a fuck if they make it so that somebody else doesn't make it home to their family. They're yeah, untrained. You can't, you can't put a dude that grew up in, in, um, in Rancho Cucamonga and then put him in the hood. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to work. Got, He's scared. Exactly. He's scared. He fears his life of everything. Big black man. He's scared. That yeah. The same black dude that slept with his girlfriend in high school, that bullied him, probably punched yep. him in his face. Now he sees him, and now he's got a badge, and he's the man now. Like, freeze. You know, now I have power. Now I have authority. I'm not the pussy from high school anymore. I got a gun. I got a badge now. And that's what mm-hmm. it looked that You know, I understand you went on some ride-alongs. You've met some cops. I actually have friends that are cops, and the things that I that they 
they tell me the whole throw the whole fucking throw the whole industry away and start over. That's what I think mm-hmm. about the police department. Throw it away, start over. The shit ain't working. Mm-hmm. It just seems like too much. But I'm gonna let you go. I appreciate you giving me your time on this subject. It's really good. And um, I, I, I'm definitely going to have you on again. I want to see who you guys get in the draft and what happens. And um, good luck. Good luck. I want hey. you to go ahead. I want to, before you go to, I wanted you to tell my listeners about your radio show. Cause I did see that you have a, a blog. What is it? Blog talk. No, no, I have a, I'm on, I'm on dash radio, dash radio, every, dash talk, dash yeah. talk. Yeah. Dash talk every Saturday morning from 11 to one. You can download the app and listen to me. And you could definitely follow me at Clipper Duro. Everything's at Clipper Duro. Website, ClipperDuro.com, C-L-I-P-P-E-R-D-A-R-R-E-L-L. Mm-hmm. Hey, and then before you go, though, mm-hmm. before you let me go, uh, Philadelphia, watch out for them. For, on the Man, East. you, you trusting the process? <laughs> Man. Hey, that boy Ben Simmons. And Joel and B, and they're playing They got something going. One. They really got yeah. something going. J.J. Reddick's hitting them shots. Like, yeah. They got it going man. over there. They, I don't think that, you know, half man, half a season and B, he got to be able to play more games for me to really get on board. But, you know, I, I, I'm, li- I'm listening. I'm watching. I just want to see how it plays out because that East is also just as nasty at the bottom. Those last six teams is pretty nasty down there. So, oh, but you have a good Sunday. Thank you for joining me. And I'll have you on again soon. All right. Always. All man. right. You take care. You too. Peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out Clipper Daryl for joining me. Um, great, great interview. I was so happy to hear about everything that um, happened in his life to become Clipper Daryl. Um, he, he's very, very, very energetic. I mean, this man is like a ball of fire when you meet him and you're around him. He just constantly moving and his outfits are flashy and, and he knows a lot about basketball and he has a really good time. So um, shout out Clipper Daryl for joining me today. Um, up next, we're going to have um, – we're going to talk some football next. We're going to have Jason Braddock on, who is a reporter from Houston, Texas. Uh, Jason is on Sports Talk 790 in Houston, I believe. And we're going to have him on, and we're going to talk about the Texans and get his input on a lot of other things that are going on in the NFL. New sponsor alert. New sponsor alert. Uh, sexual performance issues are more common than you think. It used to be something men in their 40s struggle with but now we're learning that this is happening in your 30s as well over 25 percent of the new ed cases are men under 40 and 40 percent of men by the age of 40 are struggling and not able to have an actual boner now i don't have a penis but i can speculate in some of the reasons being poor diet not exercising chemtrails it's a lot of fucked up shit happening in america right now that could be causing a lot of issues Or, you know, a lot of y'all have just been beating your dick too much or fucking too many bitches, and now your shit might not be working. I don't know how this happens, but what I do know is life ain't right if you can't bust a nut. So if you're try, so if you're tired of trying random pills found in gas stations on those strip club VIPs, it's time you tried forhims.com. Forhims.com is a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness. If that's if that struggle hairline, your bad skin, or your weak dick is stopping you from hollering at shorty with a big booty, this is for you. Thanks to science, erectile dysfunction can be optional. We're talking about prescription solutions backed by science. You connect with real doctors and medical grade solutions to treat ED, but there are no awkward waiting rooms that so you might run into any of your friends. You simply go to forhims.com, answer a few questions, chat with some doctors for a confidential review, and the product is shipped right to you. Simple and easy. For Hems is the erectile without the dysfunction so you can say hello to your little friend more often. Try Hems for a month today for just five bucks. We'll get you started for just five bucks while supplies last. See website for details. This will cost hundreds if you went to a doctor or a pharmacy. Go to forhims.com slash Miko ED. That's F O R H I M S dot com slash M I K O E D. Forhims.com slash Miko ED. Be safe though. So I'm back. 
And what I want to tell you, a lot of people hit me up and are always asking for advice and info about doing a podcast. And let me tell you something. Like today I had a lot of issues. I don't even know if this shit is lit enough. I was having lighting issues. I was having audio issues. And it caused me to have to push my interviews back a little bit, which means if you have a guest and you tell them a certain time, you have to push it back. You have to be ready for them to say, I can't do it now. You done fuck me up. So I was pushing my shit back multiple times. Jason Braddock is not able to join me. But the good thing about me is I know a lot of motherfuckers and I can have somebody sub in for me. So when you're doing a podcast, just always know that you might need a backup guest in some in case something happens on your end or on the other end of the person. So I can't have Jason on. But what I am going to do is have a friend of mine on who I've had on multiple times. He used to cover the Redskins. Now he works for Bleacher Report. He done got big wig on me and shit. Uh, I want to congratulate him when we get on air, but I'm going to call Master Tesfacion um, so he can catch me up on what he's doing right now and um, get his input on some, some football shit. Hello? Who's the master? What's happening? What's happening? How you doing? I'm good. I appreciate you hopping in for me. I had Jason. I was supposed to have Jason on today, Jason Braddock, and um, I had some issues in my studio, and then he had some issues, so we ended up not being able to record together. So I appreciate you hopping in for today. Oh, yeah. Anytime you need me. So what, where the hell are you at? You said you're in New York? Yeah, I just got back from like a two-week road trip. It was in L.A., uh, Atlanta, Miami. Jealous. Um, Jealous. Yeah. That shit was fire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to hit LA in a couple of weeks. I got some interviews I have to do, so I'll be back out there soon. Oh, for real? Yeah, I will be. But um, I was I was telling my listeners you used to cover the Redskins, and now you done moved on up like Wheezy and them. <laughs> <laughs> you done moved on up. <laughs> you done moved up on us. So tell my listeners what you're doing now. We on the east side, man. Um, I'm, I'm a senior writer for Bleacher Report now. Um, just kind of doing premium content, big feature takeouts. That's kind of one of the reasons why I was on the road uh, these last two weeks is just being able to sit down with people and spend a couple of days with them and write some genuine stories, write some real shit about it, you know what I'm saying? And not just like, oh, some, uh, you came out of the hood type shit. Some real so shit. Really, yeah, right. Write Tackling write deep topics. Deep, exactly. deep topics. Because there's more to these athletes than just the same old narratives we always end up writing about them, you know what I'm saying? So They want us to, they want to keep us like that. They only want to hear about that type of struggle, that guy that didn't have a dad, that mom worked eight jobs. And, you know, that's a great story. We've heard him, but there's more to athletes than just that. You know, a lot Absolutely. of people have different stories to tell, and, and that, that story has already been told, you know? So exactly. there's other things. It's, it's part of their story, but it's not the story. Right. You know what I'm saying? Well, so, lucky you, man. I'm Fuck. Out here. <laughs> lucky you. A lot of journalists have to write about the same shit, and they don't even get an opinion. You you know how this industry is. You're told yeah, a lot of times what to do and what to write about and what not to write about also. And now it's like, you know, if I can do a feature on someone if I want to, but then if I'm real passionate on something like Lamar Jackson and the bullshit people are spewing about him, then I can just write something and use the reporting Look. and the sources that I have to write something real on that shit. You so know? you done brought up the topic I wanted to talk to you about. Lamar Jackson, <laughs> what's the problem? Why doesn't anyone want him to be a quarterback? I'm not exactly sure. I mean, the biggest complaint has been coming out of the combine is that, like, his IQ. Um, and, okay. and that's – I think that's legitimate. Um, he, he ran, like, a, a scaled-down offense in Louisville, which there's been people who have always suggested that uh, Patino's had to change the language – to mm -hmm. make it work for Lamar and strip down a lot of terminology. Mm -hmm. um, and and he, he walked into the combines and didn't really do well on the board. Um, and and what, what it means at the board is, like, obviously you're in front of the coaches, the quarterback's coach, the GM, whoever the case may be. You're in front of these NFL teams, and they'll tell you something like, uh, break down your favorite plays. You know, draw the X's and O's on your favorite plays and the different uh, defensive coverages and how you, would, you know, mm -hmm. you, how you would scheme against them accordingly. And with Lamar, he wasn't very detailed, and that's what has a lot of people concerned about it. Okay. Uh, one quarterback's coach that I talked to said it was bad, but it wasn't the worst he's seen, and that there's still a lot of pluses that he likes out of him. But if he would have done really well there, he probably would have been a top ten pick. What do you think he like now? What's he looking at if he's not a top ten pick? I mean, at, at earliest, you think he'd probably go like fifteen, where he goes mid first. Mm -hmm. um, does he slide out of the first round? I mean, I, I think. 
that could be possible. But the way these teams operate and how desperate they can get for a quarterback and obviously the fifth-year option that they want to lock in that first year, I would think, I would assume some team gonna, is going to trade for him or pick him late in that first round. I don't know who it is, um, but that, that, that would be my assumption. I, it would be hard for me to think that someone would let him slide in the second round, and if they do, it just kind of probably uh, suggests – what we continue to keep hearing is just the, the concerns that people have, despite him being one of the most dynamic athletes and playmakers in this right. draft. For them not to view that as the first round would be a head scratcher. My, and let me ask you this. So a lot of times we hear these things about black athletes not being cerebral enough, but they have the physical talent. Is it better to have a quarterback that can draw all this out, but he's weak? Man, <laughs> personally, give me the athlete. That's, that's, Thank that's you. The way give you the athlete. Because they don't. Because it's always, not like uh, they give the quarterbacks the reins anyway. Every team doesn't just hand it over and say you get to pick the plays. The coaches call them anyways. And I feel like with training, you know, I don't. I, I'm, I'm not sure where he would go, but there's no guarantee that he would need to start rookie year. So why wouldn't absolutely. it be a process like any absolutely. other quarterback? I, I would. I wouldn't even recommend starting. I don't, I don't. I'm not a big fan of starting any of these quarterbacks. They wouldn't be. I feel like they have such significant flaws that you could end up ruining your quarterback or jeopardizing your future if you end up starting them early and mm-hmm. trying to let them fail. Like most of the time I'm with that process, but I just don't feel like there's a quarterback in this draft where you can just let them go at it. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, with Lamar, the thing I find the most interesting about him is that like people always talk about his completion percentage. And I know you've seen that shit that, Mel Kiper and uh and, and they and love Foley it. Have been they love it. They love. They about love his it. <laughs> but when it comes to Josh Allen, Josh Allen had a worse completion percentage with uh, like worse competition. Yeah, but that doesn't you know that doesn't fit their narrative him. So as long as it's not fitting their narrative, then they're cool with it. It makes no sense <laughs> to me. Like you playing literally you and you 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 playing at Wyoming, bro. You should easily have sixty percent completion. Should have been cooking. Easily. Exactly, and I know he didn't. You're cutting out. And I, I, you can say whatever you want about the AAC, but, I mean, Lamar was playing a lot better competition than, than Josh Allen was. And, and you saw how many drops his, his teammates uh, yeah. the beneficiaries of his completion percentage. I mean, we saw that at Pro Day. Them boys were dropping like eight passes. Right. So, I mean, it, it, it's just fascinating to see how these narratives are created and which, who who can we dismiss certain certain statistics for. And, and who do use, we use them. Yeah, exactly. it's all it's everyone's a knock. Yeah, that's why I hate stats. I hate stats so much. You should be able to use stats for certain things, but talent, you're supposed to be able to turn the goddamn film on and see if a guy can play or not. You don't have to say, well, he's better because he completed more balls. Well, were they throwing to the same motherfucker? Were they in the same defense? Was the same amount of time on the clock? What was the score? All those things come into play when you're breaking down film. So that's why I always say watch the game. You see how a person reacts when they're down seven, four minutes left in the red zone versus being up 30. The stats are going to fuck all that up. Absolutely. You know, like I it's, agree. I it's agree crazy that, that nobody wants to listen to this logic. Like stats lie, my nigga. They lie all the time. I'm actually, are you are you a big Lamar fan? I'm actually curious. I don't. I, I never. The thought. only reason that I can't call myself a fan of his is because I ne- I only watched what has been on TV. I never watch. I don't watch college football. I don't watch. I wait yeah, till the right. motherfuckers get to the league <laughs> when it actually matters. Because I had an argument. We were playing uh, in our basketball league on Thursday the other night, and we had we were outside in the parking lot, damn near an hour, arguing with this team that we had played against about stuff like this and stats and and everything. And um, the conversation came up about how how certain people feel like if they can argue a stat to you and and you can't you don't have a stat to combat it you're you've lost you've Hell, lost um, and it's like come on bro. it's that ridiculous like it, it's all sports. it's all yeah and and we were sitting there for an hour doing it and we were running we were talking about quarterbacks and we we're running through all these quarterbacks and talking about this stuff and I'm like this is so pointless because you can't argue with people that are only stuck on numbers you can't. Exactly. You can't. Because they they're always gonna come back to their one golden stat yeah. that they have that that, that mm-hmm. always gets re- like you hear it on ESPN or you saw it on some little infographic yep. on Twitter or some shit. Yeah. People just run with that stuff instead of actually 
assessing the whole entire body. Yeah, I had always end up getting skewed out of out of proportion. I had a dude on Twitter the other day arguing with me, telling me that uh, Slay from the Lions is better than Brent. And when I asked him why, he said he had better numbers than him. And I said, "Do you think Slay will get ten million dollars for one year when he's thirty-five? That was the question." And he was like, oh, probably not. I don't know. Blah, blah. I said, so just the fact that a man is able to do that. He told me that Slay played more man-to-man defense. His team, the Lions, played more man-to-man defense than the Bucks did for the season. And I just had to stop talking to him because I know he didn't watch all the Bucks games. I know he didn't watch all that film. But I did. I was there, and I watched film. And I watched the game, and it's like sometimes people just want to argue just because they got no good pussy at home is what I figured out. There's <laughs> no – that's it. They, did, they, they got PFF. <laughs> they beat off to PFF. There's no warm, <laughs> sticky yams at home for these niggas. And so they log on, and they beat off, and they want to argue. I, I'm not going to front. Slay, Slay gets slept on in terms of the quarterback. I never said he didn't. I never no, said I, that. I he I'm, came to I, me I about this. I, I'm not saying you did. I'm just saying, like, to hear somebody caping for Slay, that's a rarity. I don't, I don't really he, hear that. He, he was caping. A Lions fan. He is. He, he was caping. Fan. He was caping okay, hard. Yeah. And I was like, dog, like, you can't tell me that, that the, the Lions played more man-to-man than the Bucks when the Bucks played 90% man-to-man. No safety <laughs> help, my nigga, and no pass rush. And niggas was, and he averaged three balls in his direction a game. But because those three was like a now, a dig, and a slant, and it's 100% completion on Brent Grimes, okay? He got 100% of his passes completed, but there was only three, and that totaled 11 yards. You're telling me somebody else is better than him because of that. That is, you see what I mean? If a nigga had yeah. 11 balls his way and only th- and only three of them was caught, that's a that's worse. The nigga tried you 11 times. The whole he felt like a nigga was open on you 11 times. 11. It's a, you know, and that's why I'm like nigga won't even look Brett's way 11 times. He's not even looking on that side of the field. So that's why I, I, I've decided I'm not gonna argue. I'm just gonna let the money talk. I'm going to let the money say, talk. Let, hey, I'll let that money talk. <laughs> let the money foremost. talk. Let, when, let the money talk and let the, the past breakups talk. Let them, yeah, them shit. Yes. You know I mean? He played 13 games, still had like 11 or 12 past breakups, my nigga. 13 games. Get the fuck out of here. Let, let, let them talk about the INTs. You talk about yes. the views. Because, you know, there's, there's a whole lot more players yes. with that involved. You know yes. What I'm and there's another element to Lamar Jackson's situation, his mother being his manager and him yeah. not having an agent. Everybody's upset about this. People feel a way about it. They, they're they starting to compare her to me, just like they did with LeVar. Anybody that has a family member that is too close or, or too involved is getting compared to me. So they did this with Eli Apple and his mama. They did it to LeVar, and now they're doing it with Lamar Jackson. We're not the same. Yes, his mother is saying that she's like Miko Grimes managing Brent. I I manage my husband, but I do I do have uh, my I do a lot of the negotiating with his contracts. I'm the person that his agent calls. He don't call Brent and says, Brent, what do you think of this? Well, it, I get the call, but it doesn't matter to me. I feel like this is Lamar Jackson's life. Yeah, <laughs> and that that's the part that like I have a hard time balancing because logically speaking, from my end. I, th- I don't necessarily think he is helping himself. But okay. Again, I'm not. If that's the way he wants to go about it, it's his life. That's the way he goes about yeah. it. Yeah. You know saying like, and and like, whatever happens and however it does play out, that shouldn't change the fact that he deserves a starting position. Correct. Or he deserves to be a future franchise Correct. quarterback for some. He he deserves the same opportunity as everyone Josh else. Allen, jo- uh, uh, McD- uh, excuse me, Donald and uh, Baker uh, Mayfield get. I mean, there's. There's no reason why you should drop him a bar down because he decides to go about it his different way. Because if that's the case, you're going to have a hard time trying to handle some of these prospects that are coming out in, in future years right. because that's all these, these kids are on. That's their whole wave is like trying, trying to do it differently and trying to do it their own way. A better too. way, like yeah. Because exactly. they've seen what happens in the traditional way and people are just trying to see it some other way. Now, him not having an agent for his rookie deal, I – don't think there's a problem. It's it's like a standard deal, kind of. You know, like it's not really any negotiating happening, and he's probably just only saving a little bit of money so I can see why people would say, just get the agent. You know, but he's doing it his way. 
He, he got, he's the only person that's going to be affected by these decisions. None of us. It's, it's not going to stop me from eating. It's going to stop you from eating. Mm, if if no. his turns out his mama is a bad manager and, and he, he should have had an agent, nothing happens to me. So I can't really care. Good, good, good luck is what I want to say. Call me if you need any help, my nigga. I, I call exactly. me. Exactly. I mean, there, there's certain, like, the reason behind the, the agent is that, like, when these, these little fires start popping up in the media, Mm-hmm. The agent is there to be like, yo, hold up. This is so-and-so. This is what he did. Let's not forget. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's pretty easy, as you know, to manipulate. It's the bullshit of the because, league. That's what you need the, yeah. the agent for. It's for all the bullshit, exactly. for them to spin stories about you. They get at, they get, they call Jason Lock and Ford. They call that bitch-ass nigga Adam Schefter. You know, they call all these niggas, and they put your story out. It's no secret. The agents do a lot of work behind closed doors to put out fires or even start fires sometimes. Like, some That's shit. True. Yeah, shit, shit happens. Yeah. You would never know. Shit happens. Yeah. And I think that he basically has decided, because as you can see, he's not doing any press. He's not doing any interviews. His mama ain't doing no interviews. They're basically saying, we're not giving y'all shit. We're not giving you nothing. And whatever you feel like you want to put out there, then you can do it. And we just go handle it. That's what it seems like. And I feel like that is a wave. That's a wave. That That's happening. Yeah. Shut the press yeah. off. Don't give them any power. That is happening. Um, yeah, and it's it's gonna be interesting to see what comes out of it because, um, I don't, it, I I understand a part of it, mm-hmm. and I I also feel like obviously some being someone who is in the media, there are certain people in the media I guess that that can make a story about you, mm-hmm. and either it goes one way or the other, either it's something that's really yeah. powerful and impactful that like. You know, people love helps you. Race. <laughs> exactly. It, it, it gets you on the scene or it's some shit that you got to deal with. It's just like, yo, this is way off, bro. You just trying to sensationalize my life and like trying to write a bunch of bullshit about me. And it just does the complete opposite. And so uh, there are some some moments that you probably are sacrificing, like maybe for like a really good opportunity, a story for you to be vulnerable to somebody. But again, like you said, what a lot of people are doing these days, they just want to control that narrative themselves. And I'm, I can't really hate on that. You know what I'm saying? It, it it impacts my pockets because it's not like I can tell all those stories. You know, right. So I'm feel some type of way. You feel a little way if now. I that, if, if I was in their if, if shoes, I understand it. I get it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's, it's not easy to just, you know, sit allow there. someone into your private, private yeah. area. And, and sit there. Your, you got to like, just let it happen too. You have no control. Yeah. It's 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 scary. Every single time I, I go in and follow some an athlete around or follow somebody around for a story, I'm always thinking, like, you know, to be very sensitive because – you just don't know what could set them off. You don't know like what exactly is what triggered has happened. for them. Yeah, you know, Their you don't life. know what exactly is. You walk into some place that this guy has been so, or or woman has been so familiar with for years now, and you're trying to figure out and get a good summary of what this is in like a couple of days. And Pretty much. You won't always get. You know, what I'm saying you won't always get everything, and there's a lot of pressure to make sure that you get as as accurate and genuine of the stories you can. And that's a lot of people really in in the position who do that stuff can't really don't really do it well to be honest. So. I get why athletes are starting to shift away from that stuff. So. Yeah, it just takes it away. I always, I always get mad when I see players losing their job or getting in trouble for things that normal human beings do, and I'm just like, what do you think? They're not normal? They're not human? It bothers yeah. me the pressure that they put on athletes to be perfect. Perfect example, Thomas Davis, PED. He failed. Uh-huh. You know who he is, the big angry linebacker in Carolina. He's angry. He's a very angry, angry man, okay? I'm scared of him. And Brent had to remind <laughs> me who he was. He was like, that's the one you always say you're scared of. He's crazy. I was like, oh, shit, why, it was why, him. Why, why are you scared of him? He's crazy. He, just looking at him. You know, I go to the games, and I'm there early, and I watch the warm-up. And, you know, I get to see, like, who's, like, the animal on the team. He's definitely a fucking animal on the team, and he's he scares me. Just the way he tackles, yeah. he fucking runs head first into people. He tries to like tackled through them. Like my nigga be trying to go through the body of a lot of players. And Damn. yeah, he plays us hard. Let me tell you, he plays us hard. And so he's saying that this, this fail is not on him. I've heard this lots of times and it's starting to make me believe some of these players that there are supplements. There are things that like one other uh, friend of mine said that he was taking too much fish oil. He thinks, and it caused a, a failed test. Do you think that at some point we're going to have to have a better metric system for this PED stuff? Because so. it's, it's, it's not so. working. 
because what people end up assuming is that when they hear PEDs, they think it's all steroids. Yeah. That's the reason why Thomas Davis had to release that story saying, yo, I'm not on steroids. It was just some other bullshit that I didn't really realize. Yeah. I put in my body or just like, I, I've heard a lot of stories where, like, you, you know, you talking about like water pills. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot but, of uh, stuff that's triggering these failed tests and it's not steroids at all. It's not. I don't know if you got to recategorize that to something else. Yeah. To miss four, to miss four games for that, I think is. Is it's ridiculous. ridiculous. It's fucking like it's ridiculous. ridiculous. It's unfair. And I feel like they need to do something about that. They should actually say, this nigga took steroids. He took needle in his ass and took steroids. Or this guy took a supplement and this triggered the, the, the negative reaction. So we're not suspending him for four games. You know, we're going to basically, they could do something. You know, they could make them pay a fine or something because that'll make a nigga like, okay, now I got to be sure what the fuck I'm putting in my supplement and my vitamins. I got to make sure if everything everything but four games and four checks that's a reach that's a lot for somebody that wasn't actually taking steroids we ain't even talking about weed yet oh, we ain't even got into weed <laughs> they really we gonna have to... into weed. i mean that's ridiculous though like, it, they, i feel like they should knock both down to like maybe i mean one of them i don't think they should test for anyways but in terms of like things like the estrogen the water pill i mean personally it probably makes more sense to make it a two-game suspension um, but not yeah, without pay, I don't feel like. I feel like give them a fine and make them miss two games. Don't, don't do that if it's not steroids. You think a fine is just worth it? Yeah. If they miss two games, but they should still be paid is what I'm saying. Don't okay, pay them if they actually took steroids. That's cheating intentionally. You see what okay. I mean? You punish for intentional cheat. Accidental, accidental fails should not cost you that much. It's ridiculous. Uh, I see what you're saying. But the hardest part would probably be trying to differentiate whether someone was doing it intentionally or, or or someone did it accidentally. But I guess your differentiation would be if it's some real anabolic steroids. And yes, you know, flat out. Was it steroids? It, it yeah. yeah, was it steroids? Was it something that you intentionally did or was this a – they know exactly what they what the test says it was. They know. Yeah. Absolutely. They see it. Even though they don't tell the, the, the fans, they know what it was. And they don't say it. They just put it in one category that makes it look a, like a stain on your resume. You know, it's just, they, they need new they need new system. This shit is old. The NFL is old. They still cater to old white men. They need to know that black people and young, cool people watch this sport too. So you need to cater to them. You need to stop testing for weed. It's stupid as fuck for you to be saying that athletes can't smoke weed when it's legal medicinally in like 26 states. Like, what the fuck? This is this is long, getting out of hand. I wonder how long it's gonna take them to adjust all this stuff, or or honestly, if they even care. Right. I'm not, if I'm they not care, honestly. they don't give a fuck. They, they they gonna start caring when quarterbacks start testing positive, when quarterbacks start doing this shit, and that's affecting their money and affecting the fa- the franchise and the face of the, the the organization. Then maybe they will, but until then, oh. they not. You, you just brought up actually a good point. I, I don't. Has a quarterback recently tested positive for weed? I'm trying to no. think. That's the good boys. They, 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 I feel like they probably cover it up if it was a quarterback. They'd be like, nah, we're not turning that in. Fuck that. We got big games to win. I, you know I know a lot of players, they've turned a, a blind eye to their failed weed tests. I know multiple. Multiple. Yeah. So these teams will turn a blind eye to some shit. They will act like something didn't happen for the betterment of their season. So... I know them quarterbacks is getting getting lucky somehow, some way. I just don't know any quarterbacks that have told me that they've gotten off. But I know a lot of players that are not quarterbacks that have gotten a pass for weed and coke. Let's just say that. That's going to be interesting. Hey, Man, can't wait till this book come out. Boy, this book going to be <laughs> everything. And I'm not going to use nobody's names either, so don't nobody worry about shit, okay? Moving right along, <laughs> RG three it RG three is a raven now. I did see that coming at all. That's I didn't either. That is for sure uh, the shock of the year, and I feel like it happened a little bit because everybody was saying how they always like refurbish these old white quarterbacks. Like these old white quarterbacks be getting chance after chance after chance. Once a black quarterback shows any type of weakness or a failure in his game, he's gone. We never hear from him again. He's he's sent somewhere, but for RG three to get this job, what is that? What is the league trying to tell us? And Kaepernick still also unemployed. They trying to say, see, we'll hire one nigger, we'll give you one <laughs> nigger, but that nigger over there, no. 
I, I think it's them trying to show that they're not trying to blackball uh, Kaepernick. I mean, I, I was stunned by it too, and I think the the timing of it, what they were saying the day after, is like when the Ravens were being uh, they not low. <laughs> They were tied in with that Kaepernick collusion case. Mm-hmm. They were speaking to officials, so I, I think the timing there is pretty fishy. Um, but for RG three, I mean, this is an opportunity again. Like you said, I, I don't think anyone really expected that he would get. Mm-hmm. He's talked about certain teams like the Ravens that were interested in him and the Chargers that were interested in him, but nothing developed into a deal. But to finally get a deal, I mean, he could easily be the backup quarterback there. I mean, Ryan Mount hasn't really shown anything. I mean, Flacco in itself. I mean, Flacco struggled the last few years. I think it's that offense is, too is why Flacco has been struggling. But who cares if if it results oh, yeah, in? Forgot, you, huh? You, you talking about because he he ain't got enough help around him. I forgot you on that too with Flacco. It's not just about the help. I'm talking about the new system. It doesn't fit his game. It doesn't yeah. fit his game. I, I hate these co- these coordinators that come in with this amazing offense, and that's not the strength of your quarterback or your your cast of players. Yeah. You know, so they don't even tweak it. They just say, do this. This worked when I was in this, you know, when I played for this team and that team. No, I, I, don't, I don't really like the, the, the system. And, I, and I'm cheating a little bit because I know Flacco. I know some things. But um, I think it's a great <laughs> opportunity for, for RG3. You know, he's a terrible person, you know, as far as his personal life and some of the things he's done. But I do feel like he deserves another chance. I feel like what happened in D.C. was some crazy shit. I thought they were sabotaging him. There's no way he should have been on the ground that many times. It was a lot of crazy shit that happened. So this is another opportunity for him to show probably the last opportunity, you know, for him to show us what he really is capable of and what he can do. So I wish him the best. I really do. The one thing he needs to do, though, do you remember that season opener uh, with the Browns that he had? Uh Uh-huh. When, uh, that, he he tried to like run some dude over and got hurt. Oh God! On the sideline. Too much. Yeah. He Go be ahead, doing, he, sli- he yeah, be doing too much. To get out of bounds, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, don't, you don't need to be doing all that RG3. Just just take care of your body, man. He be doing that's, too that's, much. That's the only advice I'm gonna give him. Take that, care of your body. That's man. what no, I. No 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 your body. Because you can't be doing some of those moves. You got to be a quarterback at the end of the day. You have to live to throw another day. Exactly. You know, you have to you, And if that means punting or, or anything, that's what you got to do. You got to live to fight another day. You can't put yourself in harm's way, which also puts your entire team in harm's way. So, exactly. you know, don't don't be a dummy, RG3. Come on. Come on. Give us Slide, an opportunity bro. to love you again. <laughs> Slide, bro. Slide, bro. Slide, bro. Uh, one more topic with you. Um, let me let you pick. Cause you know I'm not the Bucks. They, they I'll be trying to avoid them. But you know this okay, Deshaun, this Deshaun and Jameis situation. So people ask me to talk about that, but they also ask me to talk about Des Bryant and him not never running routes before. Which one we gonna pick? <laughs> <laughs> we gonna talk about Des. No, okay, about Dez. let's go to Des. We gonna hey, lead the Bucks alone yo, this week. <laughs> hey, what? He, he just hiring a routes coach. Yo, my nigga. <laughs> That shit threw me off. That's, you and know, it, makes sense it makes, I already know it makes sense. My it, nigga it been covering him for years. Out. Yeah. And that's why he's able to lock that shit up every time. Yeah. People be telling me, oh, Dance Bryant gave Brent problems. When, nigga? When? He has he never, what, he has never he been what, able to on, give Brent no problems. He does what? The slant route, the deep end, and then the deep ball. And the deep, the go. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. He got I nothing mean, else on his tree. Too. He got no other uh, routes on his tree. And I mean, to, to say that and be cool with it, like I, I have to give respect. The nigga was like, I never had to. I never did it before. Uh, I don't know all those routes. I got to learn them now. And I'm like, damn, does that mean, does, does it mean he's going to stink? Or does that mean he has so much potential now because he didn't even do them before? And there's no film on how he would run these routes. What side of it are you on? I, I'm I'm always been a big Dez fan, but my biggest concern with him is that foot injury, and we haven't seen him necessarily return back to like the X factor that he was. Mm-hmm. So for me, I, I'm gonna go with his health, and that's why I'm gonna feel like I'm not sure where exactly he can improve from what okay. we've already seen from him. You know what I'm saying? Because like as you know, man, these route coaches. I mean, people been taking these joints since like college. Shit, and, before that, some people. Yes, yeah, you're right, actually, because the way these high schoolers are going yeah. nowadays, I mean, shit, they got these coaches going on and, like, during their mm-hmm. 707s and the whole summer thing that they be doing. But for me, with Dez, like, I don't know how much you can learn and how much you can get better in just, like, 
an off season with that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because that takes, takes repetition. Exactly. Yeah, like exactly. a lot of the same ladder drills coming out of stuff, stuttering. Like I, I, I know all the training. Brent does a lot of, you know, DB training, but he also does a lot of receiver training. It's a similar thing. It's just one is forward and one is backwards. You know, uh-huh. and so these aren't things you can just pick up overnight. You ain't just going to overnight be able to run these certain routes and be able to juke a corner. Like, let's not exactly. forget there's actual defense out here that you got to juke, my nigga. Like, you got to get by side, him. You got some You got some DB who's been learning technical skills for years. Yeah. And, and you think just because in a couple months of you doing route coaching that all of a sudden that you're going to be able to get some separation – I personally don't see it, and it's it's unfortunate because I'm a big Des fan, and I've always liked Des. But mm-hmm. I, I think I think I think he's reached his peak. I hate to say it, but I think he has. So, do, is he out of there? Is he out of there? Is he is he gonna I, be a retired cowboy? Do you think they get rid of him and he ends his career somewhere else? What do you think? I think I think this is his last year there, unless you know he does the 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 unthinkable and just balls out. You know, I'm talking like over a thousand yards and like you know eight to ten touchdowns. But if he if he's unable to do that, they're not going to do I that. Mean, they wasn't even giving the ball this year. They exactly, damn sure ain't giving it to him next exactly. year. You got Jason Witten still there. You got Zeke still there. Those two guys are going to be the the focal points of that offense. I, I just I have a hard time believing that that he's going to be he's going to be a cowboy beyond this year. Hey, I just can't see. It. I'm just glad that I got the autographed jersey, game worn. Oh, for real? <laughs> yeah, he he actually gave it. He asked Brent for his jersey after the game when they played him in the um, when he was with the Dolphins. He came up to Brent after the game and he was like, "My nigga, I ain't never seen nobody that moves like you." And he was like, "He asked Brent to train with him." He was like, "Can oh, we? Can man. I train with you in the off season?" Brent was like, "Why?" He was like, "I need to learn how to move like that, how to come out of breaks, how to stutter." How to... and Brent was just sitting there like, "What the fuck." You know, <laughs> and so he asked him for his jersey and everything. So Brent got his jersey too. And, and Brent was just like, this nigga's asked me to train. He was like, I, you know, Brent's all awkward. He probably don't know what to say. But he was like telling him, like, a lot of the stuff that I do is not training. He was like, I'm just naturally nice, my nigga. I was about to say, I was doing kettlebell videos. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey. Brent do a whole different type of training. That's why he don't want to go to OTAs and none of that shit. He don't want them to derail the things he's been doing his whole off season. And when you go there, it's a lot of meathead training with football players. They lift stupid weights that do nothing for their position. Like people always say Brent sucks at bench press. Well, when do you ever see a corner on his back and having to push a nigga off of him? You you better look at the squat numbers because that's what exactly look at them squat. Brent is probably top ten. I'm gonna say top ten of the entire team in squats, and he's and that, five ten, 185 pounds. That, those squat numbers tell everything, man. Tell Everybody everything. Keeps at the wrong numbers, man. He might be top five now that I think about it. Because Brent, you know, you know what happens is this is this is another truth that people need to know. Most NFL squats are done at a forty-five degree angle. Brent squats ass to grass. Okay, let me say it again: ass to grass squats with more weight than a lot of linebackers, a lot of D linemen, everything. I believe again. I've seen your Instagram. I'll be seeing some of the weird shit that y'all be doing working out. <laughs> yeah. While. I'm like, I'll be on my couch like, damn, that shit look like it hurt, man. Yeah, he, he the, does things that The body that control help. is crazy. Yeah, he does things that help him. He knows what it takes to do the things that he does. That that stopping on one foot and still being able to take off in the air. Like this nigga Brent will be backpedaling and the ball going in the air. He's able to plant, boom, immediately and jump fucking 45 feet in the air. I just be like, how is he doing it? And he says his training is natural ability, but it's also he trains the right muscles. He doesn't train the muscles that are not important to his skill. So no, that makes sense. Yeah, maybe he, maybe he be doing his thing. Yeah, he be he doing might, his thing. If anything, shit, he should write down those techniques and tactics. You know, you know what I'm saying. Once when it, whenever he wants to finish his career off, I'm working on him. I'm, write that I'm, book or I'm working or do on some him. Video. Or... I'm working on him. You know, Brent. <laughs> Brent is happy keeping all of his information to himself. <laughs> he, t- he gives it all to me. You know, I have a degree in exercise science. So, you know, me, I can, I can help and come in, but he's self-taught. He's self-learned. And so, you know, we just keep it to ourselves. And, and he, we built a gym in our garage. You know, we hood as fuck. We got oh, the so doors. Yeah, yeah. We got the doors open. I'm in my panties and bra. My neighbors just be like, "What the fuck is going on over there?" But that hey, music blaring, out blasting, aided on a four wheeler. Like we, we be having fun over here. But we do our own 
training and the shit works. It obviously works, you know? So absolutely. Yeah. But I'm gonna let you go. I know that you are running around and everything. I appreciate you joining me and stepping in for Jason. No doubt. Anytime, Miko. Tell my people Same how they that. can tell my people how they can reach you on, on all your social media though. On Twitter, it's Master T E S, M A S T E R T E S. On Instagram, it's Master underscore Tisfodskin. There's a link to my IG because I know y'all don't know how to spell my last name on my Twitter. Yes. So keep that <laughs> shit. <laughs> I know how to spell it. Look, I'm gonna look at the phone right now. T E S F A T S I O N. So you got that joint. Yes, I got it. You remember got I used to joint. struggle with your name, but hey, now I'm good. Yeah, I'm good now. <laughs> I got it now. All right. Well, I appreciate I'll you. In New York. I'm, I'm coming to see tax soon. I was trying to wait for that weather to break. You know, they just keep getting yeah. these random ass snowstorms. I'm off that shit, New York. I need to figure hey, out yeah. weather out before I get up there, but I got to come yeah, see pull, Beloved. Pull up. Oh, yeah, pull up, come see him, and then come swing by our offices, and I'll, I'll give you a good source. Sweet. All right, big homie, I'll holler at you later. All right, take it easy. All right, peace. Yay, yay, yay. That was Master Tesfacion. See how I can say his name so easy. It was training, you guys. It took a lot of fucking training, but I got it. And uh, I just want to say thank you to him for subbing in for me. I had a situation where timing fucks up. Sometimes when you're doing a podcast like this, shit fucks up. You always have to have backups and have good relationship with people that are knowledgeable and entertaining so that you can get your shit off. And boom, there we go, my nigga. Another show done. Shout out to you for joining in. I appreciate everyone listening. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I totally fucking enjoyed it. I learned something. I hope you learned something. Sometimes shit don't go the way that you want it to go. Sometimes shit gets a little fucked up. And, you know, you still get it done. I still got the show done. I had a couple of hiccups here and there, but I got the show done. I want to shout out Clipper Daryl for joining me. And I also want to shout out Master Tess Facion for joining me. Um, both of them gave great content. I hope and, and I hope that I have them on at a future time. And for those of you that are still asking me to come on your show, on your podcast or whatever you're doing, if you're serious, if you're serious, you have to go to my email. Stop going to my DM. Stop hitting me up. I'm not going to entertain it, my nigga. You have to go to my email where my assistant, whose job is to do those type of things, will contact you and get it done. Okay? Let's do things the right way. My mentions are not for business. At least you're talking about a big check. If you're just talking about me coming on your show, no, my nigga, I'm not going to entertain it. Because I don't know if you're serious. I don't know any of that bullshit. So please hit up my email. It's on all of my social media. It's iheartmikogrimes at gmail.com. If you want me on your podcast, if you want me on your show, all whatever it is that you want, hit up my email and I will take care of it for you. Um, don't let Cardi B's album fool you into thinking that that was the only dope music that was put out this week, okay? The weekend put out an amazing we album. It's only six songs, but them shits are all fire. All of them. And I'm gonna leave you I with one of the favorites of mine. It's called Call Out My Name. Call out a bitch's name you if you want to keep it real. Alright? 